All right, everybody. So the person that I'm going to discuss in the video today is a person that's not off limits, but it's a person that I've been told that I should tread very lightly when speaking about because he's a person that's still alive. Um, he's not necessarily somebody who's out there on the street, um, active like he was in the 1980s and stuff, but he still has connections and he's still a very well-respected person, especially in the North End. Um, so I'm not trying to upset this person or anybody that's, you know, family with him or close with him. I'm not trying to incriminate him in any way. Uh, I just promised people that I would make a video about Jimmy Lamoli. Um, I'm not ready to do a full length video on him because I don't have any pictures of the man. Um, so please, if anybody has pictures of Jimmy Lamoli or knows somebody that might have a picture, please help me out with that. But I do want to discuss some of the stuff like that I found in research and with talking to people that have like firsthand knowledge of the stuff that happened. So the man that I'm speaking about is Vincent Ferrara, a.k.a. Vinny the Animal Ferrara. And this guy was the man in the North End. Like In the 1980s, after Jerry Angelo and his brothers went away, Vincent Ferrara was the man. He was right below J.R. Russo, and, but J.R. Russo is from East Boston. Vinny Ferrara, like, he ran the North End after the, after the Angelos went away. And I was told that he was not a man that you raised your voice to. You certainly did not put your hands on Vincent Ferrara. He was feared, respected, the whole nine. This guy was very formidable in his own right. He was not a guy you wanted to trifle with, but he also surrounded himself with real tough guys who were willing to do anything for him. And they had basically an understanding that they knew that Vincent Ferraro was going to be the man. He was going to be running Boston, the North End, and beyond, and that they were going to be his guys, and it was the short ticket to be made, you know? So Jimmy Lamoli and his best friend Patsy Barone, they were Vincent Ferraro's guys. They were willing to do anything for him, you know? And unfortunately, it seems to me that Ferrara, who is a very intelligent, cunning guy, kind of manipulated this a little bit because I think that he was the thing that separated Vincent Farrar from the rest of the gangsters and the, mo and the mobsters in the Boston area was his intelligence. This guy was college educated. He went to Boston College, which is a very prestigious school. So, I mean, I'm not trying to talk smack, but a, a lot of guys who are in the criminal world aren't necessarily the brightest guys around. I mean, Jerry Angelo had that famous comment where he said, I got plenty of tough guys. I need tough guys with brains. And that's exactly what Ferrara was. He was tough as nails, but he was smart too. And he was calculating. And I'm not saying that he didn't li I mean, I, I'm sure he was friends with Jimmy Lamoli and they had an admiration and respect for one another. But I think to a certain degree, he like manipulated these guys and got them to do a lot of stuff. And then he kind of got to live off of the infamy of it or like he became more feared because of some of the stuff that Jimmy was doing and that Vince Ferrara wasn't necessarily responsible for these things and he didn't want to take responsibility for them but he didn't mind people thinking that he was involved in it and it gave him a, a little made him more feared in the north end and so specifically what I'm talking about is in the 1970s before Angelo left town before Ferrara like reached the peak of his power there was this guy Jackie the Franzo and his buddy Anthony Colito and these were like basically Farage rivals in the North End they were from the same age like they were the same generation the same age group um, Ferrara was taking the traditional route trying to become a made mafia member trying to you know work his way up the ranks and become you know he wanted to be I think he wanted to become the boss the whole time and he knew that he had what it took to be to get to the next level so but Jackie DeFranzo and his buddy Anthony Colito they were the opposite they weren't trying they were against the establishment and in the 1970s these guys started robbing protected card games and dice games that were protected by Angelo and that were being run by guys that were connected or guys that were actually made themselves they were robbing people left and right they were sticking people up in the north end um, there's countless rumors I read in different sources that both these guys, if, if, if not both, definitely Jackie DeFranzo was heavily involved in narcotics, um, possibly selling them, but he was pretty strung out himself from what I read. 
and that could possibly be the catalyst that was pushing him into, you know, performing these armed robberies and robbing the card and dice games. But at the same time, he could have picked other card and dice games. I think he had a little bit of a reckless nature to himself where he was trying to give, like, the middle finger to Angelo and to the establishment, to the mafia, and maybe even to Vincent Ferrar because these guys clearly did not like each other. Um... Vincent Farrar also made claims later. I don't know if he personally made claims, but there was claims also, um, and it was attached to him in like an FBI report that the Franzo was a you know a real bad heroin act, and he also did inappropriate things to girls and stuff like that. So he was not well liked in the in the North End. He was described as as Farrar to be a, uh, the Franzo was described as Farrar to be a scumbag. Farrar didn't like the guy. So when the Franzo and Colito and their gang starts knocking off these card games. And Julio says, this this got to stop. You know, somebody's got to take care of this. So, Vincent Ferrara and his boys are on the task. They're out there looking in the north end for Jackie DeFranzo. On December 11th, 1977, they catch up on him. They catch up to him at a social club on Endicott Street in the north end. Um, now... Karen Denunzio, I believe it's Karen Denunzio, is Jimmy Lamoli's sister. She testified at a trial, and apparently, now I don't know if Jimmy really did confide in her. Maybe they really did have a crazy close brother sister relationship where Jimmy would confide all this like gruesome details from crimes and tell her all the stuff that happened. Or maybe it's a little bit of his sister was upset about what happened to her brother and how, how basically like the people he gave his life for kind of screwed him over but I'm not going to get too much into that right now but she might have just been kind of like trying to she might have had like knowledge but it wasn't necessarily exactly the stuff that she was saying like Jimmy told her all the stuff detail you know graphic details but she testified in court and she gave evidence about this particular crime and she said that they caught up to Corlito I mean to Franzo at uh, a social club on Endicott Street where they brutally beat him. It was Jimmy Lamoli and Vincent Ferrar. Brutally beat him. He was shot in the head. And then Jimmy Lamoli told his sister that after he was shot and killed, that he proceeded to kick him in the head after he was shot, which is pretty violent and gruesome. But, um, so, and, and he apparently told his sister that he wasn't the one that pulled the trigger. So basically he was implicating that Vincent Ferrar did the crime. There's no statute of limitations on murder. I'm not saying that Vincent Ferrar murdered him. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. Um, you know, like I said, Jimmy Lamoli's sister might just be saying this stuff out of spite, out of anger for what happened to her brother. He might not have even said this to her, but that's what she said. Trial said that Vincent Ferrara pulled the trigger and that Jimmy told her that. So after they beat him and killed him, they propped him up in a chair and they proceeded to set the social club on fire to try to, you know, hide the evidence or make it look like he died in a fire or whatever. But his body was brutally beaten and he had a bullet in his head so the police obviously knew that he was murdered and he didn't die from a fire. So Jackie DeFranzo's main guy, Anthony Colito now, is swearing vengeance against Vincent Farrar. You can't have that. You can't have some guy walking around the North End saying he's going to kill you. So b before that, this made Ferrara the golden boy. I mean, he was already like that guy. He was rising up through the ranks. They liked him. He got he's got brains. He's an earner. He's tough. He's like everything you want. If you're looking for like a, a soldier who's gonna possibly become like a capo and raise be a leader someday, this guy had leadership qualities, leadership capabilities. So Angelo is you know he's basically this is he's made his ticket now. So now this Anthony Colito, he's out there on the streets. He's saying he's gonna whack him. So they're basically looking for him. He's looking for them. It's like a shoot on sight type situation. Uh, you know if they see him, they're going for him. It doesn't matter who he's with, where he's at. So about a year and a half after they they take out his buddy Jackie DeFranzo, um, Patsy Barone. So Patsy Barone and Jimmy Lamoli were best friends. Um, Jimmy Lamoli was the best man at Patsy Barone's wedding. He was the godfather to Patsy Barone's kid. So these guys were like best buds. So Patsy Barone, Jimmy Lamoli, and Vincent Ferrara are walking down Fleet Street in the North End on, in the summer on July 21st, 1979. Like I said, about a year and a half after the Franzo was murdered. So it's, it's a, been a little bit of time has passed. And they see Colito and he's walking with his girl. And they pull out, they get the drop on him, and they stop blasting at him and they hit him. I don't believe the girlfriend was hit. I think she ran away. 
she must have been scared to death because nobody was ever charged with the murder and she obviously was there and she saw what happened she probably was scared to death to say anything i'm just kind of speculating on this i really honestly don't know what happened to the girlfriend so they shot him they hit him he was laying on the ground it was uh middle of the street in the north end like, and if you've been to the north end you know how tightly packed the north end is like you, it's not like you can shoot a gun in the middle of the street in the north end people aren't going to notice so they start running away and as they're running jimmy stops and he turns back and he goes back patsy says, what are you doing what are you doing jimmy we gotta get out of here he said nah and he walked back up to anthony colito and stood over him and put a couple more bullets in him to make sure that he was dead and this is the type of guy jimmy moly was this guy was fearless and He's described by people who know him as just one of the toughest. I mean, like, Vincent Ferrara was tough, but, like, Jimmy Lamoli, they said, was one of the toughest sons of bitches that ever walked the streets of the North End. Uh, one of his close friends said that just by walking down the street with him and people seeing him with Jimmy, that people wouldn't look at him cross anymore. They wouldn't talk to him disrespectfully. They wouldn't look at him the wrong way. Just because they knew that he was boys with Jimmy and you didn't want to fuck with Jimmy. And another just real quick story just to kind of give uh, kind of insight on Jimmy's personality. I wanted to save this for the video, but I guess he was at a bar and he had run up a pretty big tab on, at the bar. And the bartender cut him off and said, I'm not, I'm not serving anymore until you pay off your tab. So Jimmy pulled a gun out of his waistband and shot the chandelier off the ceiling. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I just, he just seemed like he was a real character, you know, not a guy that you wanted against you. You did not want him as an enemy because he was a very, very dangerous person. But if he was your friend, I think he was the type of guy you wanted as a friend. You know what I mean? I had a couple of friends, not necessarily to that degree, but I had a couple of friends growing up that like nobody would mess with me because I was friends with that person. And it's always good to have a friend like that, you know? So anyway, so after... Colito and DeFranzo are gone. That's basically Ferrara's competition on the street. Not necessarily competition, but those are the guys that he had as rivals on the street. So in 1983, so in the late 70s, basically Ferrara wipes out his competition. There's nobody out there. He has no more rivals in the North End. He's got Patsy Brown and Jimmy Lamoli underneath him, two, two very tough guys, especially Jimmy Lamoli. He knows he can count on them for anything. If he, he could call them any time, day and night, and they would come and they would do whatever he asked. That these are the type of guys he was. And apparently, the rumor was like after like Colito met his demise, Ferraro was very happy with his guys and the loyalty and the toughness that they showed. And I don't know, maybe because Jimmy went back and finished the job, but he gave them both allegedly he gave them both a thousand dollars after that as like a as a gift or tribute for for doing a good job. So then Vincent Ferrara was made in 1983 by Danny Angelo, smiling Danny Angelo. And um, that same year, the Angelos get hauled off to prison. Um, Jerry Angelo famously yelled, I'll be back before my pork chops are cold. But unfortunately for him, he was in prison for like the next 20 years. They did let him out and he was able to die a free man, which... Which is good for him and his family. Um, I don't think he deserved to die in jail. The guy had never committed violence himself in his life. Maybe he had other people commit violence on his behalf, but he was he was in, into gambling and loan sharking and stuff. Like they just went after him so hard because he was part of the Italian mafia. Like people like that don't deserve to die in jail. Like they let people who do things to children and stuff get out after a couple months, but they put guys like that away for 20, 30 years just because they're part of the Italian mafia. It makes no sense in my opinion, but that's my opinion. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. So then I don't want to get too much more into this because I do still want to do the full length Jimmy Lamoli video, but I just want to paint a picture of what it was like in the eighties or like the late 70s, early 80s in the North End. And basically, I want to just explain, like, Vincent Ferrara, he was the man in the North End. Like, especially after the Angelos went away, he was the capo. He was soon to be, if, you know, they pushed uh, Junior out of the way. And basically, if Ferrara didn't go down as part of that mafia induction ceremony in Medford in 1989... He would have been the boss. You know what I mean? Eventually, probably they would have got Russo, and Russo would have got away for somebody, and Ferrara would have been running the whole thing. He was the smartest. He was the toughest. 
He was the most cunning, the most calculating, in my opinion. Uh, he was just, um, he was like a cut above the rest of these guys. And he had guys like underneath him, like Jimmy and Patsy. But then, a couple years later, after Angelo went away in 1985, things started going wrong. Like, basically, from the time that Angelo went away. When the old guard left, you know, when Patriarca died, when Angelo went to prison, Bayonne went to prison, and a lot of these old guys were off the streets, these young guys kind of threw out the rule book, you know, and it started getting really treacherous in the North End. There was, like, a lot of robberies going on. There was a lot of narcotics dealing starting to happen because it was, like, the late 80s, 1990s. Cocaine was a wash. Uh, there was just a lot of new things entering into the underworld, and it just started to get really kind of treacherous and dangerous, and... Um, there was like these series of drug rip-offs going on where they were like ripping off drug dealers for large amounts of marijuana, um, selling them like peat moss and wood chips and stuff for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And basically, Jimmy Lamoli got like left out of one of this. And I, I'm not going to go too far into it, but basically things went wrong really fast after all this stuff that I talked about happened. And, um, and basically, Jimmy, who gave everything to this guy, Vincent Ferrara, and to the organization of the Mafia, and was, like, loyal to a fault. He did some stuff that he probably shouldn't have done, and I'll make a video later, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about everything that happened. But basically, you know, they turned on him. And Ferrara claims that he didn't have anything to do with it, and he most likely didn't. Uh, I mean, I don't really know the specifics of it. We'll make a video, and we'll talk more about it. But I just wanted to put this quick video out and kind of, like, give a little outlier because I'm just holding on to all this information about stuff because I wanted to make the Jimmy Lamoli video. And I've been talking primarily about the 1960s and the Boston Irish Gang War and I kind of wanted to just do something a little different for this video and talk about this. Um, so I hope I'm, I'm not offending anybody. Like I'm not saying that Vincent Ferrara committed any murders. Um, this is just like statements and stuff that I've read in, in like court reports and FBI reports. Um, like I said, who knows if Jimmy Lamoli told his sister these things, if they actually really, if that was like truth, if she actually had these conversations with Jimmy and he described in like graphic detail. That's kind of a lot of stuff to put onto your sister, you know, to tell her about. But I don't, again, I don't know what kind of relationship they had. Maybe they talked about this kind of stuff regularly. But uh, the point is, is like Jimmy trusted these guys. Um, he looked up to Vincent Ferrara. Um, and he would do anything for the guy. And even if Vincent Ferrara didn't have anything to do with what happened to Jimmy, he maybe should have done a little more to protect him uh, because of how close they were and because of all the stuff that Jimmy did. But like I said, I, I can't really speak on that because I wasn't there. And we'll talk more about this in future videos. I don't want to kind of like talk about stuff multiple times. So we're going to we're gonna cut it for the for what we're talking about today. We'll, we'll stop it there. So, like I said, 1977, uh, Vincent Fra and Jimmy Lamoli take out Jackie DeFranzo, who was robbing dice and, and poker games in the North End, uh, and he was just kind of a rival of, of Vincent Ferrara's who he did not like for a long time, and he had no problem with taking him out. Um, that was the thing, too, in the FBI report, was that he had no problem. Like, he said, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't pull the trigger. But I got no problem with my name being associated with the deaths of Colito and Jackie DeFranzo because I didn't like those guys, especially DeFranzo he thought was a scumbag. So he really didn't have a problem with his name being connected to those crimes, even though he said, I didn't kill anybody. I'm not a murderer. But I don't mind people thinking that I had something to do with it because I don't like them guys. But he had a problem with people thinking that he was involved in what happened to Jimmy because he did like Jimmy. And he wanted Jimmy's father to know. It was very important to Vincent Ferrara that Jimmy Lamoli's father know that the only reason that he copped being involved what happened to Jimmy was because it was probably like the deal he had to take um, I'll talk about all that stuff in future videos too because it's probably like the Rico case and stuff like that they ended up Farrar got uh, hemmed up in that big Medford induction um, ceremony case and that's what he went to prison for but they also tried to charge him with like the murder of ordering the murder of Jimmy Lamoli and he, he copped to it but he was later found out that this guy Walter Jordan gave false evidence to the FBI once again, knew that somebody was giving false evidence and they still went forward and tried to prosecute somebody. And it was that, it ended up being repealed years later and his sentence was commuted and 
Farrar was let out of prison. But before he went to prison, he wanted Jimmy Lamoli's dad to know, like, I didn't do this. I'm just saying this because it's part of, like, the deal, like, I have to take. But I, I want you to know that, like, I, I did not have anything to do with your son being killed because apparently his family was really upset about it because they know how close Jimmy was with them and how Jimmy would have done anything for this guy. And then for them to feel like that Vinny, like, didn't have his back and even ordered to have him killed, like, it must have been, like, very upsetting to them. But... You know, Vince Farrar, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, I don't think that he ordered Jimmy to be killed, but I think that he could have done more to protect him. That's just, that's just a personal opinion. That's opinion of other people who are actually around at the time, and they feel that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to be putting out more stuff on this particular topic. Uh, like I said, again, I'm not, I hope I'm not offending anybody. I don't mean to, I'm not trying to besmirch Vincent Farrar's name or... You know, he's moved on with his life and he's doing his thing. And he's got family and stuff like that. And he's like very well respected in the North End stuff. But this stuff did happen. Um, you know, it's kind of like Jimmy died and, and nothing was ever like done or said about it after. And it's like, I don't know, there's nothing on the internet about it. And so when I started looking into it and I started, people started reaching out to me and they were very happy that I was going to talk about it and they wanted to help me out. And I still do need more help if I'm going to do like a full length video about Jimmy Lemoyne about his life and stuff, and I would like to have some artwork of the man when I do it, but um, I don't know. It's just a really crazy time back then. This was like the precursor to like the 1990s mafia war. This is like the stuff that was setting it all up, because when these guys went away, like when Farrar went away for the induction ceremony, it was such a void in leadership, and that's why when Salami came, Salami came out of prison, he was trying to take it all for himself because he saw, he saw like the you know. How, how, how weak everything was, you know, without these guys around, without Russo and Ferrara in Boston, it was pretty much for the taking. So, like I said previously, folks, my intention in making this video isn't to upset anybody or to try to incriminate anybody or to bring problems to anybody. So, but if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought about the video, um, make a request. Most of all, guys, make good choices, take good care of yourselves. Your fellow loved ones, family members, other human beings, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon. God bless.